Hello everyone, welcome to Power Electronics lecture series. In today's video, we are going to take a look at power diodes and types of power diodes. Let's get started. In order to understand power diodes at the first place, we need to know some of the basics with respect to normal diodes, isn't it? So we are basically going to look at the structure and understand how is the structure quite different with respect to normal diodes. In general, we know that there are two important type of materials that is P-type and N-type. P-type refers to trivalent impurity and N-type is basically pentavalent impurity, isn't it? When we place P and N-type material without any electrical power at this point in time, what happens? The electrons in the N-type, which are the majority charge carriers, will start diffusing in the P-type and the holes which are the majority charge carriers in the p-type will diffuse towards the n region as a result we will be seeing some amount of immobile ions that is formed across the junction in this particular fashion whenever you are giving supply to it what happens the supply voltage should be greater than this particular region so that we will be able to have recombination of holes and electrons taking place and the current starts flowing in the circuit so one important observation that needs to be made is that this region over here is called as the depletion region and the potential required to overcome this region is called as the barrier potential. We also call this voltage as knee voltage or the voltage required for the device to start conducting. These are other terminologies but in general we need to know what depletion region is all about and what barrier potential is all about. So why am I talking about diodes at the first place with respect to structure? As I mentioned, we need to compare it with power diodes. So how does the structure of power diode differ when compared to this particular diode? In power diodes, you have N plus layer and on top of N plus layer, you have lightly doped N minus layer and then you have P plus layer. And then you have anode and cathode over here. This is the structure, but there are some important things that you need to observe over here. I've written something called as plus and I've written something called as minus. What does that mean? Plus indicates heavily doped. So I'm representing it by HD and minus indicates lightly doped. So very, very important observation. So I'm having an additional layer which is N minus over here in comparison with this type of structure. And this layer is called as the drift layer. Very, very important point. And the reason why we want this drift layer is in order to increase the reverse breakdown voltage capacity. So there are chances since it is handling very high amount of voltage, we need to ensure that it does not burn out under reverse bias condition and in addition to this it also observes the depletion layer over here that is indicated so that is the reason you that is the reason why you need n minus layer and it is formed between p plus and n plus layers which are heavily doped i hope this point is clear so now what is the symbol of power diode so the symbol of power diode is as follows. You have the same symbol as that of diode and there is no differences. This is anode and this is cathode. So we have seen the structure. We have seen the symbol. Very, very important points that you have to make a note of. So once we are aware of these two things, the next concept is characteristic. So we will first see the forward characteristics and then we will be going towards the reverse recovery characteristic. So ideally when we talk about a diode, what are the things that we expect from it? We expect the voltage drop when it is conducting to be equal to zero. We don't want any voltage drop appearing across the diode because it will contribute to losses, isn't it? Secondly, under reverse bias condition, we want leakage current to be ideally equal to zero, but this is not the case in practical conditions, isn't it? There will be some amount of reverse leakage current flowing due to the presence of minority charge carriers. We also expect the on-state resistance drop to be equal to zero, 
and the off state resistance drop to be equal to infinity these are our expectations but is it possible to achieve this no so considering these factors let us first look at the ideal characteristics you have i versus v or also referred to as vi characteristics what happens is that ideally we expect when it is conducting the current should increase in this particular fashion and not have any deviations when the diode is reversed bias we expect the voltage to increase in this particular fashion in a straight line so this indicates that the voltage drop is zero and leakage current is zero and there are no resistances and the resistance offered during the reverse pass condition is infinity but practically are we getting this type of waveforms no i hope you would have already studied the characteristics of a normal diode where you will be getting forward up to this point where uh, which is also referred to as the knee voltage once it is reached the diode current starts increasing in this particular fashion whereas with respect to reverse bias characteristics beyond some point the current becomes uh, larger and it increases rapidly in this particular fashion so we are aware of this characteristics and the deviation from ideal to practical conditions is very very important because we will always handle devices in practical environment isn't it how is this characteristics different with respect to power diode the characteristics is almost the same you don't have significant difference only thing is the forward voltage drop with respect to power diodes is 2 to 3 volt whereas in case of a normal diode the forward voltage drop is 0.7 volt or 0.3 volt depending upon the type of material you are using and the on state resistance increases because in the structure i showed you one n minus layer being added isn't it so each layer will contribute to some amount of resistances so that is why the on state resistance has increased compared to the previous normal signal diode that is taken into consideration so these are two important observation and now you might ask me why is forward voltage 2 to 3 volt and will it not contribute to more amount of power losses compared to a normal diode if you carefully observe 2 to 3 volt is a large value but power diode handling capacity as i already mentioned in my previous videos it will be in kilo volt when you are having devices handling kilo volts of range 2 to 3 volt is very very small whereas normal diodes will be handling very small voltages and 0.7 volt is a comparable uh, way with respect to 2 to 3 volt with respect to power diodes so structurally if you see the difference also you saw three layers added and the cross sectional area was also very high because it is handling large amount of voltage and power capability so i hope the forward characteristics is understood and the forward voltage drop is very important thing that you need to remember now let us look at the reverse recovery characteristics so reverse recovery characteristics is as follows the current remains constant up to some point once it starts conducting the current will be constant really flowing through the circuit and now at some point in time let us say i am actually turning the diode off or you will be saying it as reversing uh, the polarity of the diode that is reverse bias condition what happens is the current immediately reverses its direction and still will continue to current in the reverse direction for some amount of time and this is because of the minority charge carriers present in the power diode and this characteristics or this time duration for reverse recovery is called as reverse recovery time fundamentally there is no difference with respect to signal diode and a power diode with respect to this classification both of them have almost the same recovery characteristics whereas you can still have improved characteristics of power diodes and that is based on the classification of power diodes now what are the types of power diodes then power diodes are classified into three types general purpose diodes which is generally used for high power applications 
and fast recovery diodes used for freewheeling and feedback diode applications and Scott key diode used in power supply applications. So what are these general purpose diodes? We usually use it in rectifier circuits. So rectifier circuits will normally be operating at the supply frequency that is 50 Hertz, isn't it? So 50 Hertz is the nominal frequency in which these type of devices operate. And this is very, very less in comparison to certain devices operating at kilohertz of frequency range, isn't it? And that is why these devices are operating for low frequency and high power applications. Remember, very, very important point, high power applications and low frequency. If someone asks you, why is it operating at low frequency, then you have to mention that these are used in rectifier circuits and they will be operating at the nominal power frequency that is 50 hertz according to Indian standards. And that is why these devices are used for low frequency applications. Now fast recovery diodes, I mentioned that they're used in freewheeling and feedback diodes applications, right? So these indicate this is talking something with respect to the recovery characteristics. I showed you the reverse recovery characteristics in my previous slide. So there you saw there was some amount of time required for the current to come back to zero, isn't it? And there are certain devices that requires less recovery. You want the turnoff time or TRR to be very, very less as far as possible because you will be using these type of devices in certain applications like inverters or choppers and the devices that are used are called as freewheeling and feedback diodes and the significance of using them. Why freewheeling diodes are used and what is freewheeling diode? What is feedback diodes? I will be explaining in detail when I go to that particular section because now if I have to explain this, I will have to take a converter circuit as an example, which is not the ideal way of starting the concept. Scott key diode basically contains a metal combined with a normal junction N type material. So the metal basically will act as the P type material and we will also be using a normal N junction with it. So it is used in SMPS applications and these type of materials will be having lesser amount of on state resistance drop compared to other devices. Now you might ask me why is it having lesser on state devices? We are using a metal isn't it and comparison with a normal P type material. Since a metal is used, the on state resistance drop will be much lesser in compared to other devices. And Scott key diode is used in power supply applications. So I hope you have understood the basics of diodes on power diodes, starting off from structure and the recovery characteristics, the forward characteristics, and what are the different types of power diodes available. In case you have any questions, feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below. If you have any feedbacks with respect to this lecture series, please do let me know. Thanks for watching this video. Please do keep supporting. Thank you.